Hi everyone, and um, thank you for joining us today for the Commonwealth Games webinar. Before we start with our main sessions, I'll just take the opportunity to introduce myself and my panel members that you'll be hearing from today. So my name's Helen Kershaw, I'm Head of Commonwealth Games Delivery at the West Midlands Combined Authority. Also here with me today, we've got Zuki Gill, she is Employment and Skills Manager for the Birmingham 2022 Organising Committee. And Suki's role involves making sure that there are employment opportunities that are inclusive and accessible to all. You'll then be hearing from Sam Bourne, who's from GI Group. They are the official recruitment providers for the Commonwealth Games. Sam is the project manager on site managing the team recruitment, ensuring that all paid opportunities are available within the organising committee. We've then got Laura Easton, who's the volunteer and recruitment and selection lead for the 2022 Commonwealth Games, and will be presenting on Games Time volunteering journey opportunities and how people can apply. John Hall is the Jobs and Skills Academy lead and he ensures the Academy supports local residents to access Commonwealth Games opportunities. Rachel Evans is Employer Engagement Manager for the National Careers Service across the West Midlands and Staffordshire. She will highlight how the National Careers Service can, can provide bespoke support to individuals to help with their applications for various Commonwealth Games opportunities. Um, there'll be lots of opportunities for questions today. Suki and Sam aren't able to stay with us until the end, so we'll take any questions that you have for Suki and Sam after their sessions, and then there'll be another opportunity at the end of all the presentations for you to ask questions. So moving swiftly on, um, we'll next be looking at a video recording that's been specifically recorded for this session today from Andy Street, Mayor of the West Midlands. Thank you. Hi there, Andy Street, Mayor of the West Midlands here, and it's my pleasure to say a few words to introduce the Your Career webinar, focusing on the Commonwealth Games. So four years nearly since we won the right to host the Commonwealth Games. So exciting is getting that. And we've always said this was big news for jobs. That's what this is all about. 40,000 jobs, 13,000 volunteering opportunities at the height of the Games. And we're determined that those jobs go to local people across the whole of the West Midlands, from Wolverhampton to Coventry. And what this webinar will focus on is just what is available. And you'll be struck by the range of jobs in marketing, in social media, in hospitality, in event management, you name it. And at all sorts of levels as well, entry levels and the higher skilled jobs as well. And we'll also talk about the volunteering opportunities. We'll introduce the Jobs and Skills Academy, which is the way we're recruiting people into these opportunities in the games. So you'll see exactly how to do that. And I hope that so many local people will have their first or maybe their re-entry into jobs after the COVID pandemic through the games and the opportunities that come there. And it could be a real defining moment for some of you. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the day. Okay, great, well, thank you. And um, we're moving on to Suki next then, thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Suki Gill. I'm the Employment and Skills Manager. And I'm just going to briefly talk about the Commonwealth Games and what this could mean for you. Next slide, please. Okay, so we've got the Commonwealth Games taking place on 28th of July 2022 to 8th of August 2022. So exciting times ahead. So what does this really mean? Well, what it means, there will be 72 Commonwealth nations taking part, 11 days of sport with 6,500 athletes and officials. 
a regional showcase with venues in Sandwell, Sully Hall, Clinic Chase, Berkshire and Wolverhampton. In a moment, I'll go through all the venues and hopefully there's a venue close to where you live. 2.4 billion citizens across the Commonwealth and this is going to be a huge event with up to 1.5 billion global TV spectators. We anticipate there will be over 1 million tickets to be issued during the game, so that in itself just shows you how big this is going to be. So let's now talk a little bit about the game's times roles. So we anticipate there will be approximately 35,000 opportunities and as Andy has just said, we are covering lots and lots of different sectors, such as cleaning, catering, waste, logistics, security, stewarding, retail, warehouse, FLT, admin, IT, broadcasting, customer service. So really, hopefully, there's something there for everybody. So with these um, game time roles, um, there's two avenues that we are taking and these will be procured through our contractors and it's my role to build a pipeline of opportunities and work closely with Jobs and Skills Academy to ensure that these jobs do go to the local people and that you all have the necessary skills and the training required to apply for these roles when they go live. We also do have vacancies with the organising committee, which my colleague Sam will cover in a moment, and we are always recruiting. Okay, we'll have a cultural programme that will reach more than one million people, and there's going to be a huge boost to the economy, anticipated over one billion, including travel, trade and tourism. A trained workforce of at least 13,000 volunteers. So we're not just talking about paid opportunities, but there's going to be opportunities for people to volunteer, or maybe for those who at the moment aren't looking for paid opportunities. And Laura will be talking about that in a moment. As mentioned earlier, we estimate 300 million of games contractors expected to benefit local and regional suppliers. So we really do want to keep the opportunities local. And if we do give it to local suppliers, again, we're hoping that they will recruit locally. So again, opportunities for local people. Next slide, please. Okay, so we will be covering 19 sports, including eight para sports. The ones in yellow are the eight para sports, so that includes aquatics, athletics, three by three basketball, cycling, table tennis, weightlifting, and para powerlifting and cycling. And we are doing something a little bit different this time round. And the three by three basketball is something that I'm really looking forward to. So essentially, it's going to be two teams um, with three players each and one hoop. So it's going to be a really fast and furious game. So something really to look out for there. Next slide, please. Okay, so now let's talk about the venues that we have in place. We've got Alexander Stadium, Arena Birmingham, Edgbaston Stadium, the NEC, NEC Arena, Sutton Park in Sutton Coalfield, University of Birmingham, Smithfield, and we have more. Next slide, please. Canic Chase, Coventry Stadium, West Park in Wolverhampton, Lee Valley in London, Sandwell Aquatic Centre and that one's quite exciting for me, it's not too far from where I live and I've actually seen that being developed, Victoria Park and St Nicholas Park in Warwick. Next slide please. Okay so this gives you a snapshot of the venues and what sports will be taking place at each particular venue. So if I just mention a few, so we've got cycling in West Park and Canic Chase, we've got athletics in Alexander Stadium, triathlon in Sutton Park, three by three basketball and beach volleyball in Smithfield, we've got judo, rugby, wrestling in Coventry and lawn bowls in Victoria Park. So really there's lots and lots of activities going taking place in all of these venues. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so what is our mission? The Games really is for everybody. You know, part of my role is to make sure that all of our opportunities are inclusive and accessible to everybody. We want to make sure that through the Games, we do bring people together and everybody is included. Improve health and well-being help the region to grow and succeed and just be a catalyst for change. We really are doing things slightly differently. We are the first and only multi-sport event featuring an integrated para-sport program for elite athletes with a disability. And also we are the first multi-sport event to have more medal events for women um, than men. So hopefully by doing something completely different and new, it will really put us on the map. Next slide, please. And if you would like any further information, please visit our website. We've always got new news stories on there. And again, everything that I covered will be on our website. Thank you. I think you're unmuted there, Helen. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Suki. Just moving on to Sam now. Thanks, Sam. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to go to the Oxford Dictionary, isn't it? I think you're muted. I think it's a phrase that's uh, not been said as much in the last uh, last year. Okay, so I'm, uh, as Helen said at the start, I'm a uh, programme manager, so I'm looking after the team on site uh, at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, and we are, um, so my team and I are, are delivering all of the paid hiring into the organising committee. So um, by the time we get to Games Delivery Time, the organising committee should be somewhere in the region of 1300 to 1400 uh, staff um, there'll be a huge amount of support around that as we've mentioned in terms of the contractor workforce and volunteers uh, but in terms of the paid staff it should be around that number who's going to the next slide please um, my team uh, have got roughly about a thousand paid opportunities left to fill um, so we're just coming up on a year to go scarily uh, and there's, there's, there's still two thirds of the roles left to fill. So there's, there's absolutely opportunities there for a huge number of people to still get involved and get a paid role. Um, those roles could be anything from hired now and you get a year through to you know, six weeks before the games and it's a, sort of a really short term paid contract, but there'll be all sorts of positions available. Uh, obviously in addition to that you've got the 13,000 volunteer roles that we talked about and the 40,000 job opportunities that will come through the supplier network so you know there's a huge number of roles there uh, and my team will be looking after those paid ones um some examples you know talking about junior and entry level stuff um that, that makes up a, a big bulk of what we've got left to fill now um across administration coordination supervised level positions uh, for example, there's a, a block of 25 sport roles. I don't know if you've been following any of the social media posts, but they've just been advertised and put out to market. Um, and, and they've just closed, um, oh, I'd say last week. Um, we had in the region about 1,500 applications for that. So you know, there's a huge amount of interest in these roles. Um, there's 188 or so still to go this year that we're going to be filling uh, and about 287 entry levels. So that's in that kind of 19 to 35,000 pound range to fill next year. Next slide, please. Um, those roles cover off a, a massive range. Um, you know, we are essentially building a, a, a small, an SME. Uh, you know, it's a, a, you know, a big size company. So you've got all your traditional sort of office kind of roles within there. So marketing, legal, HR, um, communications, uh, legal procurement, et cetera, et cetera. So those kind of roles are, are definitely there. What we do have there on top of that, though, is some of the the more exciting, say, exciting is the wrong word to use. It's a disservice to those uh, those office based roles, but um, some game specific roles that you just don't find anywhere else. So, um, if you're looking through those things like spectator engagement, um, things like sponsor services, sport equipment, so we've got teams of people that are going out sourcing the the right sort of kit to allow the uh, the events to take place. We've got protocol coordination and that's really interesting because that's looking at things like making sure that the right flag the right national anthem is is played when when people are getting their medals and the medal ceremony we've got all of the roles linked to the queen's baton relay which is the the international and then and then um national um procession of the the, the queen's baton uh, around the entire commonwealth 
um, you know, things like communications and contact centre stuff, which again is open to all. So there's all sorts of roles out there. Some really interesting positions. Um, and as I said, they're they're open for anyone from absolutely zero experience um, who just want to take that first step on the career ladder, through to people who are looking to do something a bit more specific linked to their you know, work history today. Uh, next slide, please. So in terms of the roles, um, they can all be found there. So that that first website is the the job site. Every one of our roles will be going through through that site. Um, you can also register your interest for updates. So um, that at the moment is you'll be getting very minimal um, communication at the moment. But as we get close to games time, uh, we're going to start doing a regular set of updates that goes out to that group, um, just sharing opportunities as they as they as they're posted. Um, as I said, if you apply to one role, um, there's no guarantee that you'd then automatically be considered for another. Uh, so you do have to make sure you stay on top uh, of the, the jobs as they get posted. And they, they can be live for a, you know one week to up to four weeks. So if, you, if you've got a role that's kind of advertised for a single week or, or two weeks, and you, if you're not checking that, that site regularly, there's a good chance you might miss it. So you do need to stay on top of that. You can set up alerts so you can make sure that you get notification when those roles come through but registering for that group, following the social media pages of both the games and GI group, will mean you're not gonna miss out on anything and you'll get a notification when those roles come through. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in terms of the actual application process, we've made it deliberately simple. Uh, so the application is, is as simple as name, contact details, some EDI, um, diversity and equality and in, uh, <laughs> equality and diversity data capture, and then obviously a CV and a cover letter. Um, that CV and cover letter, we do advise you do one per application and just a bit of personal advice. You know, as you heard from the sport applications, we've had, we get a huge amount of interest for all our roles. Um, and you as an applicant need to find a way to make yourself stand out. And a big part of that is personalizing your application. So doing a CV, doing a cover letter, uh, and making sure that that's personalized for every role you apply for. Um, so we would advise you to do a one for each application. But either way, you need to do that every time you apply for each role. Next slide. We'll take you through. Um, so after the closing date, you'll get a notification through. That notification will either be thank you for your application and you've been unsuccessful. Um, we, we wish we could phone every applicant that comes through. Um, unfortunately, it's just not possible. So if you are unsuccessful at that initial stage, it will just be a simple notification to say thank you, but please do keep trying. Uh, if you are successful and you've, you, you're going to move on to the next stage, you'll get a call from one of my team who will take you through a, just some, some introductory questions, talk to you about the role in a little bit more detail, and then take you through the interview process and what that'll entail. Uh, next slide. Uh, currently, a lot of our interviews are being done over Teams, or all of them are being done at Teams at the moment, with a hope that we're going to move back to doing something face-to-face -face, uh, in the next few months. It's we're a bit, bit, uh, bit alien, having hired... 350 people over teams remotely in the last year and a bit but um, we'll be hopefully going back to those face-to-face -face interviews in Birmingham in the not too distant future. Um, the interviews are competency-led so they'll be linked to the job description obviously in terms of preparation just make sure you've, you've done a bit of research on the games, the role, you've had obviously a good read through that advert and make sure you're familiar with what sort of key skills are going to be um, and then you'll get at least two people from Birmingham doing that interview so you should have a nice a panel interview with, with a couple of different people for you to talk to. Uh, next slide. Uh, after that, again, if you ask if you're unsuccessful, you'll get a phone call. So at this stage, you will get some more detailed feedback. And if you're successful, we'll either, either take you on to the next stage of the interview process or we'll be talking about how we bring you on board and uh, go through that onboarding process with Birmingham 2022. Next slide. So there's a few links there. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to send these round. So if you, you know, we're going to scribble them all down. But uh, the, the main job site's there, the jobs feed, which is the register your interest page is there. And you've also got a register your interest page for Birmingham News too. So again, that's more general updates on anything and everything games related. Um, sport game change opportunities are there in particular. So obviously they, they've obviously closed now. So sorry, that link's probably a bit less relevant, um, but the volunteering uh, is actually just about to kick off. So you'll start seeing a lot more um, news about that and the volunteering applications go live on the 1st of June so I don't want to take too much away from the next presentation so I'll leave that uh, volunteering part there and uh, and, and let that uh, be explained in more detail. Uh, next slide. I think that is it yeah. Thanks.
Sam, I'm taking myself off mute this time as well. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, thank you both. So we're just moving on to questions now, and I can see we've got some in the chat, so I'll read those out. Sam, the first one is for you, which is, what are you doing to support people with learning difficulties to access employment? And have you heard of supported internships, and are you offering them? Uh, good question. Supported internships, I've not heard of. Suki, is anything being done across the organisations that you're aware of linked to that? So we, we have done some apprenticeships and they and say we, they, would they have been hired already be, just because of the time frame that those apprenticeships run for? We, we did those at the start of this year. Uh, obviously the apprenticeships need to run for 15 months so unfortunately we can't hire any more of those. Uh, in terms of supported internships it's not something I personally am familiar with um however that's not to say that another area of the organization might not be investigating that to say we focus very much on those sort of paid opportunities rather than temporary employment and short-term opportunities so we'd need to look into that uh, and get back to you uh, if we can get the details helen um of that that person we'll we'll, we'll look into it and we'll, we'll get back to them uh, and hopefully we can communicate to the the attendees um what we what we find out on that but in more general terms so obviously learn disabilities disabled applicants in general um the games is a disability confident employer um we we're working through freddie and we're making sure that all of our roles are accessible um reasonable adjustments will be made for anyone that wants to step into the roles and they'll be considered alongside everyone else um you know we'll make it as we're making it as accessible as physically possible and you know our desire is to make this the most accessible games ever and you know we want to make these opportunities open to everyone in the midlands well everyone across the country but obviously that focus on the midlands um to make sure that anyone that wants to be involved can be if possible thank you sam so you'll send we'll send some further information around after this um just to follow up on the supported internship point brilliant thank you okay so the next question is um again probably for you sam is there any opportunity in data science or analytic roles well, now you're testing my knowledge of our workforce plan now. Um, there must be something linked to that. There's, there's um, no, I can't tell you exactly. I, I, again, it's another one I'd need to go away and look through the, say, the thousand or so roles we've got left to go. Um, that forms part of most organisations. You know, there'll, there'll always be sort of people that are analysing data. Uh, and there will be a huge piece of an analysis that goes on looking at the legacy and the impact of the games. Um, so, you know, the, the, there will definitely be a lot of analysis done on um, the roles of people we've hired, where they're from, you know, the, the, the regional impact. Uh, and we are actually hiring for a, an HR information role at the moment. So actually, I'm just, just quickly, quickly checking back. So there is, if you're focusing on HR information systems and, and linked to our, our HR system, there's a role actually live at this exact minute, um, which might be of interest. But yeah, there, there will be, I'm sure, some roles linked to that. But again, I'd need to go away and check the exact specifics for you. Great, thank you. Um, and also one of my combined authority colleagues who's on the call has said that we all have some data analytics um, roles that will be specifically relevant um, for transport. So we can make sure that that information's shared as well. Great, thank you. Uh, so the next question is, what is the minimum age requirement of these roles and do you accept 16 to 17 year olds? So for paid opportunities, it's 18 plus. Um, there's, from an insurance perspective, that, that's, that's our minimum age for jobs within the organising committee. Um, when we get the apprenticeship presentation shortly, there are opportunities within the apprenticeship programme for 16 to 18 year olds. Again, I don't want to steal any thunder, but we'll we'll go into that in a bit more detail from an apprenticeship perspective shortly. But paid opportunities, it's 18 plus. Great, thank you. And we've also got a question about whether we can share the slides. Um, yes, we can share these and there'll be a recording as well that is accessible. And at the end of this, we can talk you through where you can find all the information. Uh, next question, so regarding the security, would you have to apply directly or is it through a separate security company? So that's about the security roles. I think you're muted, Suki. Thank you, Sam. 
I'm, um, I'm the mute police today. So. <laughs> you're, you're the mute police, you're fantastic. Um, so I can answer that. We will have our procured contractors coming on board very, very shortly. So with regards to these um, security vacancies, we are working with the Jobs and Skills Academy. So for those individuals who are interested in becoming a security um, guard, um, we will help and support you with your SIA badge and license. So we are at the moment, the Jobs and Skills Academy have developed a security proposal. Everything is in early stages, but with regards to how to apply for these vacancies, we will let you know. And I think at the moment is to make sure that people get trained, first of all, and the JSA will play an important part um, in all of this. But they're not the organising committee vacancies, so there will be the contractor vacancies, which is completely separate. Okay, thank you. And our next question, do you have any active roles that are directly related to athletes and coaches? And as a separate one, how, how do you compete in the Commonwealth Games? So do you want to do, who wants to, if we, should we cover the active roles um, available in relation to athletes and coaches? Yeah, so in terms of the active roles, um, we have just, so I, I mentioned this actually in my, my presentation, we've just, just closed 25 roles that were specifically linked to um, sports. So that was the sport competition managers, uh, technical official managers and entries manager roles. Um, they were specifically targeted at people who wanted to start a career in sport. Um, so they were kind of that, that first step on the ladder. So uh, if you didn't see those, you probably just missed them, unfortunately. Um, there will be more roles to come within sport and, and within technical officials, um, which would probably appeal to coaches. Um, there may also be opportunities which you could look at with individual sport bodies as well, because you know they'll be hiring additional support staff um, as, as part of their you know, sending sending delegations in so I, in terms of that as I said, there will always be lots of roles coming through keep an eye on the website um as i said within that thousand roles there'll be all sorts of opportunities that might appeal even if it's not directly linked to you being a coach um it might still be obviously that coaching experience and that interest in sport may all be relevant and be something that will help you to secure a position um in terms of how you become how you compete and that's an interesting one. i think probably starting with a a a club would be a good start getting that interest in sport getting getting some practice and then eventually you know i think once you sort of get better and better and better you know you'll kind of come onto the radar of the national governing bodies for your individual sport there'll be selection events that go on and you know you quite regularly you'll see people saying oh they've, they've met the qualifying criteria for the olympics or for the commonwealth games and they're done through special events that uh, allow competitors and athletes to meet that minimum criteria for selection uh, and then so yeah, you have to then get selected for the, the national team. So you know, it, it's a, that's a very basic intro to that from someone that doesn't know a huge amount about how you do it, but <laughs> that's what I've kind of picked up. But yeah, if you kind of contact national government bodies, if you're interested in rugby or hockey, et cetera, you'll be able to find some information if you look on their, their, their pages and I'm sure there'll be some guidance for how you get into those sort of sports. Great, thank you, Sam. Um, our next question, do you offer part-time roles, for example, weekends and evenings? Uh, at the moment, no, is the, the short answer. Um, our roles are all office-based, nine to five. There are some roles that can be part-time, but they're normally Monday to Friday, um, part-time within, within the working week. Um, when we get close to games time, there will be a lot more flexible working roles, weekend roles coming up. Um, so again, yeah, watch this space. Great, thank you. We've got in the chat, and um, thank you, that's really helpful, some information on um, supported internships, so we'll pick that up. Um, next one is, I'm a photographer, is there an opportunity for me to join? Just hired a videographer. Um, there will be other roles coming through um, linked to that so you know there will be other videographer and, and marketing roles uh, and I don't know if there's sort of an official photographer pool um, I know we do hire journalists who will be doing work on the news feed um, so I'd, I'd, again I'm, I'm pretty sure there are roles that are linked to sort of photography 
um, and record it, I, I would have to look into that because again, that might be something that goes out to one of our um, procured suppliers. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, thank you. We've got a question from an organisation called Go Train. So, how can Go Train get involved in this process? They work with people across the Midlands, offering qualifications and recruitment support. Okay, so I think I can answer that one. Um, I would say once you've listened to the Jobs and Skills Academy presentation, I think that might give you um, a better understanding of the way we've set things up. We are more than happy to work with lots of organisations out there because we do want to make sure we are targeting everybody within the community. Um, but at the moment, with regards to Jobs and Skills, we are going through something that we set up, which is the Jobs and Skills Academy, but more than happy to work with lots of providers out there. Great, thank you. Um, and maybe John can um, pick up some more on the Jobs and Skills Academy when we come to his session. Uh, we've got a question of, can college students from elsewhere in the country be considered for roles? Um, the person that's put this question in says, for example, they have a dual site role with a college in Birmingham and Yorkshire. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we, while that goal that goal is to leave that legacy in the Midlands of, of Midlands hiring, Midlands Midlands talent, that's not to say that we are excluding anyone from anywhere else. Yeah, if your skills um, and experience are relevant to the role, you'd of course be considered alongside everyone else. Um, and when it when it kind of boils down to it, we we absolutely want to try and bring the best talent in to the organising committee possible to deliver the best games possible. So um, while there is that general desire and aim to hire locally um if the role requires it of course we'll hire from outside of the west midlands it's, actually we're not drawing a, a big big red circle around uh, around birmingham and saying absolutely no one else and if you look at the makeup of the organizing committee there are plenty of people who've come from outside of the midlands who are in that organization already so it's absolutely not limited just we've got that underlying goal to try and hire where possible from the midlands Great, thank you. We've actually had a couple of questions about that, so um, I think you've, you've answered those. Um, next question, where can we find the detailed description for the jobs that are available? So whenever you see a job advertised, uh, if you go to that, the jobs page I discussed earlier, with every job, there'll be a job description attached to it. So at the job, the very top, it'll be job description, there'll be a link and that will open you up the job description associated with that position. And then there'll be the advert below it, so it'll be connected together on our career site. Thank you. And Sam, that careers site will also, for each of those individual roles, tell say what the deadline is to apply, won't it? It's not like it's yeah. one big batch of roles that's being advertised at the same time. No, no. So it's a, it's a rolling programme. So roles are constantly being added and, and expiring all the time. We've, we've, we've been averaging something around 15 to 20 live roles at any time. Uh, we've got up to 40 before. We've been down to five before. So uh, everyone at the top of the ad, the very first line is the closing date. So it'll tell you exactly when you need to apply for. One thing I will say is with all these jobs, there's a standing disclaimer that we can close the role at any time. Uh, and that's purely based on the volume of applications that we get. So if we are, have got a very popular role that's open, um, we can close that before the closing date. So if you ever do see a role you're interested in, my advice is to apply as soon as possible. Don't sit on it and wait. Don't think I'll leave it to the weekend because there, there is a chance it might disappear. So if you do see a role, get that application in ASAP. Thanks, Sam. I think that's actually a really important point, isn't it? That um, just be keep an eye on the the closing date and yeah. as soon as you can. Um, we'd also had another question, which was, can people apply for more than one role? My understanding would be, yes, they absolutely can, but it has to be an individual application for each of the individual yeah. job roles. Absolutely, yeah. So don't make the assumption because you've applied to one job that you automatically can be considered for another. Um, each role is taken. Obviously, there's always some cross pollination of candidates. You know, if we see a superstar that comes through for one and they're really, really close, and another manager thinks, oh, they'd be great for this job, there may all be a, an automatic transfer, but that'll be done in collaboration and conversation with the candidate. If you're applying for jobs, my advice is always to apply for every job you see you think you're relevant for. It will not hinder you. You won't be won't be seen as a negative with your application if you've applied to 20 jobs um but just be prepared that obviously you'll get if you apply for 20 jobs you're unsuccessful for 90 and you'll get 90 in rejections um one thing i will say is you know, one of the one of the apprentices that we had that applied earlier in the year applied to i think it was the 12 of the apprentice apprenticeships that we had out there got rejected for 10 and got the 11th one 
you know, so they, they got those all those rejections before they were successful. Had they not persevered and kept applying, they wouldn't have been successful in the end. So absolutely stick with it because there's so much competition. Great, thank you. And um, we've got one question that's coming up on volunteering, but Laura is coming next, so we might be able to cover that. Laura might answer the question, or if not, we'll pick it up at the end. Um, conscious of time, so if there's any questions that we haven't answered, we'll make sure that we get back to everyone on the call with answers to those questions. Um, just probably a nice sort of segue on, which was not a question, but um, people that are with us saying they're really excited about the opportunities. So I think that's a great time to move on to Laura. And just to reassure everyone, we will answer any questions that have been answered so far. Thank you, Laura. That's great. Thank you very much and thank you everyone for having me here today. My name is Laura Easton and I am leading on the Games Time Volunteer Project, so the recruitment and selection of all our wonderful volunteers. Do you want to go to the next slide please? The, this is quite a, a timely meeting. We've just recently launched our new brand, um, which you'll be able to see on these slides, and also the name of the volunteer programme, which is the Commonwealth Collective. Um, we launched that on Tuesday, so a big moment for us to really start raising awareness and um, the promotion of the volunteer campaign. Our volunteers will be known as the Commonwealth Collective. Um, the story behind this name is around that volunteers are the heartbeat of the Games. The Commonwealth Collective celebrates what's special about each and every volunteer. When we come together, we form something even more powerful, capable of great things, a shining example of the human spirit, and a deserving of celebration. And the quote from Lord Cove, which was um, used uh, uh, or said at London 2012, was that volunteers can make the difference between a good and a great Games. Um, I think from this call, um, we can start to see the theme of how important people are in making a Games, um, how people, what the, the value that people can bring, and that is certainly the case um, for the volunteer programme. Volunteers will be, um, in many occasions, the first point of contact for many of our different client groups. They are usually very front-facing um, and they are um, around all of the different venues, locations throughout the West Midlands, um, whether it's athlete training facilities, our sport competition venues, athlete villages, the arrival departure, train stations, um, airports, throughout the cultural life sites will be in different towns um, throughout the region um, and also within city centre locations directing people to where they need to be and where they want to go. So they are very much the face of the Games. Um, so it's really important for us that we um, recruit a, a great team of people to come together to work as a team, um, but also embracing everybody's uniqueness, individuality and own personalities um, and, the un um, and what they can bring to the programme. So if we can go to the next slide. Our key objectives within the programme um, is to create um, a unique experience, an experience of a lifetime for our volunteers to, to be involved in. We want to create that excitement um, anticipation throughout Birmingham and the West Midlands for people to get involved through volunteering. So there are a number of different ways, and you're hearing this on the call, that people can actually be involved, whether it's through employment, through kind of shorter term contracts, the volunteering programme and there will be other opportunities as well um, but we really want to make sure that we raise awareness and for people to know that applications are opening um, on the 1st of June if they would like to be a part of it. We are looking to recruit the right number of people into the right roles um, so ensuring that it's people who have the right motivation, passion um, and wanting to be part of the programme. Uh, people don't need to have volunteered before, they don't need to have specific skills or experience um, to be able to apply or to end up volunteering because we can support with the training and what they have to do um, in their role. But we are looking for those people to, to be um, those passionate ambassadors um, for Birmingham and the West Midlands. Uh, and because of that, we want to create that one team culture of all those passionate ambassadors uh, supporting the legacy post-games. So again, within our project, we are very much um, 
uh, the priority or we are focusing very much on local people. So um, like Sam had said, this does not exclude anyone else from applying um, and there is um, a, a huge number of opportunities. But we very much want to make sure that if there is to be any sort of legacy post games, then we have to have the local people um, th throughout the West Midlands involved um, in the first place so that um, that um, sense of civic pride that hopefully people will get from volunteering at such an event, um, the, the experience that they'll get, it stays within the region so that if other events and other things come back, you know, we're starting to build a volunteer workforce um, that are, are skilled in particular areas, but also so that the experience that our volunteers have had, um, and again, hopefully a good one, can start to filter in throughout their communities. They can be those ambassadors, you know, when we speak to a lot of people at the moment, um, they're very interested in volunteering and a lot, what a lot of them say is they saw maybe a neighbour or somebody they knew volunteered at London 2012. and they were kicking themselves that they never took part in it and they don't want to miss that opportunity again. So previous event volunteers have inspired the people who are going to apply to our programme and these volunteers will inspire people within their communities as well. If you can go to the next slide please. So just want to give you a bit of an overview on some of our timelines and what the volunteer journey actually looks like. Um, so it is quite a long process, we have to admit, for, for volunteers in terms of when they actually submit an application to when the games um, actually happen and that they will be on shift. Um, we have been working behind the scenes, um, doing a lot of planning um, for our launch on the 1st of June. Um, I'm working with a number of different groups, organisations and networks to start to promote the opportunity, um, working with local authorities, um, and particularly colleges, universities, um, many different groups within different communities to in, present like we're doing here today and to just share the information so that, that network, the further networks can inform um, of the volunteer programme. Our applications will launch on the 1st of June, so a week on Tuesday we go live. Um, it's an online application form, um, it will take around 20 minutes to complete and we'll be capturing information about individuals, um, just their key contact details, but they'll also be able to express to us um, some um, preferences um, of maybe areas or the types of um, games time role that they would be interested in and they will be able to identify as well some of their um, skills or experience that they have um, uh, to, to offer as well. We won't be asking most of the, the menus on the, the volunteer application form are drop down menus or check boxes. Um, there are some spaces where people can give a little bit free text, more information, but we won't be looking for people to upload CVs or to be writing um, long cover statements or personal statements. Um, it is very much kind of capturing the key um, areas that are relevant to the event. We will be, um, once the applications close, we will start to select them, those that we will invite to the volunteer selection event. Um, the volunteer selection event is where we will um, interview the, the, those that have been successful from application. We'll be inviting around 25,000 people to attend the selection event. Uh, it will take about an hour um, in total, so between September and December, um, those 25 thousand people will receive one a one hour time slot that they can come along to. Um, it's a mixture of giving them the opportunity as well to ask us more questions to see if it's something that they would be interested in but also for us to get to know them to um, uh, allocate them into the, the right position that is that would be suited to them. The selection events we hope will be um, quite a fun experience as well. I fully appreciate that interviews can be very, very nerve-wracking. So what we want to do is invite people. There will be an exhibition space where they can, um, they will be able to again, learn more about the Commonwealth Games, Commonwealth history, our um, 
more about Birmingham, more about the West Midlands. Um, it'll be interactive as well, so lots of um, selfie opportunities um, and hopefully making people feel at ease um, and yeah, giving them some of that prior information they need. They'll then go into a bit of a film room where they get to see a video of what it would be like volunteering at an event such as this. Again, all the while checking in with them to ensure that this is something that they're looking um, that they would still be interested in. And then the interview process would take 20 to 25 minutes. Um, that is conducted by another volunteer as well. So we have selection event volunteers. Um, so we volunteer interviewing a volunteer for their, their games time role. If they've been successful through interview, um, we will then start to um, confirm the volunteer offers from January of 2022. And once a, a volunteer has confirmed um, that they accept the role in the venue that we've offered, then they start to move into that training pathway to get them ready for games time. There's three different trainings that we ask volunteers to commit to. And that is from, um, they will run between April and July. The first one being an orientation event, um, which will run in April. That's where we bring everybody together. And we, um, it's a quite a big production event. Um, it's giving specific, it's giving general overview of the games and general training. Um, again, quite a fun, um, a fun event with different athletes attending and, and that's where we reveal the uniform as well. So it's always very anticipated. They then will have between April and June a role specific training. So that's one session again for role specific training. Um, and depending on what the role is, um, it usually will be last between three to four hours. The role specific training, like it says, it's much more specific to the role that they will be doing during games time. So they'll start to meet the um, their workforce managers um, and the, the team wider team that they'll be volunteering with during games time. And then venue specific training will be right very close to when the event starts in July. They'll be able to attend the venue that they would be based at. Again, much more specific training of um, orientating themselves around where they will be based um, and getting to maybe do more practical um, activity in terms of training and how they um, what they'll be doing on their shift. During this time as well, we'll send their rosters so they know when they're on shift and what days. They'll receive their uniform and they will also receive their accreditation pass, which means they can get to wherever they need to be when they're on venue. If you can go to the next slide, please. So just to give you a bit of an overview of just some of the numbers and um, that we're looking at and the scale of the programme, we're looking for over 13,000 volunteers. Um, and this will be around 314 different volunteer roles across 21 functional areas and departments. So that starts to show the, um, the number of different opportunities and the number of kind of different skill sets or what different people can bring to the programme. Of the 13,000 positions, there's about 28% of them will be specialist volunteer roles. Um, that's where we do require specific skills or experience. Um, so some of our medical roles, um, such as a volunteer doctor, a volunteer nurse, chiropractor, as you can imagine, have to have very specific um, knowledge or qualifications to be able to be assigned there, maybe within the sport team as well, where they have to know what um, the rules, regulations or technical knowledge of that specific sport. But for the majority, over 72% or 72% roughly of those um, volunteer roles will be what we refer to as generalist. And what that really means is that it's having that right attitude. If they meet the criteria, we can support and train that individual into whatever it is that they are required to do. We will have a young volunteer program um, between um, the, yeah, of our under 18s, which will launch later on this year. But just to let you know that that is a close, it will be a kind of closed recruitment in terms of it wouldn't be for individuals to apply and it would need to be groups um, and organisations, so maybe groups of six to ten. Um, we would have approximately, um, in order to get our volunteers games time ready, approximately 250,000 hours of training will take place. And over the games between our selection event volunteers and our um, games time volunteers, there will be over a million um, volunteer hours um, that people will give to this event. We can go to the next slide. 
So just to give you an idea of some of the volunteer criteria, volunteers will need to be 18 years of age by the 1st of January 2022, available to volunteer for the full duration of the Commonwealth Games period, so between the 28th of July and the 8th of August, and we are asking them to complete a minimum of eight volunteer shifts. Volunteers have to be able to speak and read English or communicate with Brit in British Sign Language. It doesn't need to be their first language, um, um, but we do require that volunteers are able to speak and read English. They have to be able to eligible to volunteer within the UK, agree to it and pass the relevant security and background checks, accept the role and venue offered and complete all retire, required training. If you can go to the next slide. And we ask a lot, I realise, of maybe our, our volunteers there, but hopefully we are hoping to really give our volunteers an experience of a lifetime. There are, like I said, around 314 different roles available and they are across a number of different departments. We, have volunteer, we will require volunteers in transport teams and what we call our accreditation teams. Um, uh, throughout media teams, sport teams, accommodation teams. Um, so there's a, a within local, um, what we call designated walking routes, but between the venues directing um, maybe those with tickets or even just members of the public interacting with them. So there's a huge variety of um, opportunities. I think some of the opportunities can maybe seem more exciting than others but what I would say is that with volunteering even if you are placed in a role that you um, hadn't selected and it wasn't one of your preferences you just never know what you're going to get from that experience. I think the great thing about volunteering is that um, no matter where or what you're doing and normal life if you like volunteering you're in a position you're wearing the same uniform um, you could have a young person who's maybe just left school or um, you know at college or university um, and they're volunteering alongside the CEO or a director of a, a huge organization and at that moment in time they're equals they're always equals but they're they're equals they're doing the same role and people start to meet each other in an environment that they would maybe not normally meet. Um, so that's just, for, for me, there, there are some benefits um, to the, the benefits I will mention around volunteering and what we can give. But I think there's those um, opportunities that it's hard, you just don't know until after the event of, of what this can actually bring. Um, so it's just my um, encouraging people to um, be open-minded and to embrace the the whole journey because it can it will be a, an absolutely fantastic experience but we will for volunteers cover their public transport costs when they're on shift so that's within the west midlands um, if they live within the west midlands to wherever the venue is we'll provide all their meals snacks or um, soft drinks when they're on shift like I said before, we'll really give them the full training um, for each role and they'll receive the unique games uniform. So uh, this would be so workforce where the paid staff will wear the same uniform as what the volunteers will wear. Um, and that will be um, that identity of us becoming that one team um, as part of the games. The items of the uniform are likely to be a pair of trousers, um, polo shirts, kind of some warmer zipper um, and waterproof jacket, um, some sort of hat and backpack as well. We have a reward and recognition programme for volunteers. So we will um, reward our volunteers um, every couple of shifts with unique gifts um, that will only be available to them. So it wouldn't be something that's sold in shops or it won't be something that other um, groups will be able to get their hands on. So um, there is um, their first shift, say their third, their sixth shift, their eighth shift, they will be given a, a different gift at each um, stage of the process. Um, we are working with, I um, mentioned before, some of the, the Jobs and Skills Academy and the, to provide support for anyone that requires it. Um, and we'll continue to support those um, post games, um, support people post games um, into other volunteer opportunities. And we're working with our legacy teams as to how we can do that. You can go to the next slide. 
And yeah, that leads me on to beyond Birmingham. So um, I think it's just really important for us that if their legacy starts with what we do now, um, if there is to be any legacy from the, the events within the region, then that is why we focus very heavily on prior or um, recruiting local people. Um, we also want our volunteer workforce to be representative of Birmingham and the region. Uh, we are working with different partners to um, come August 2022 and even on the volunteer journey of how we can support people into transitioning into different pathways. So it might be that those are interested in still volunteering. Um, it might be though that people are ready or they're looking to go into some sort of um, further education or employment pathways. And we uh, are looking to create a digital platform um, to continue to engage with those volunteers so that when it does come end of games time, hopefully they've had a great experience and we'll use that platform to show what else is happening within the communities throughout the West Midlands. So that's uh, an overview of the, the volunteer programme. And pass on. Thank you, Laura. Um, so we're next going to hear from John Hall, who leads on the Jobs and Skills Academy for the West Midlands Combined Authority. Thank you, John. Thanks, Helen. Hi, everyone. So um, just to introduce myself, my name's John Hall, and I'm the Jobs and Skills Academy lead for West Midlands Combined Authority. Um, next slide, please. So as Andy said right at the start of the of the webinar and equally uh, colleagues from the organising committee have also said there are a tremendous amount of opportunities that are going to be created through the Commonwealth Games. The purpose and I guess the, the aim of the Jobs and Skills Academy is how we can support West Midlands residents to be able to maximise those opportunities. So we worked in conjunction with the organising committee to establish the Jobs and Skills Academy to, to basically see how we could um, support that, um, that process. Um, the aim, I suppose, in terms of the Jobs and Skills Academy is very much around with a focus on those individuals that are, are unemployed or young individuals as well, as a way of ensuring that we can raise awareness of the opportunities that are created by the games but equally how we can support those individuals to achieve their goals and and take part and i think for us it's not just about um individuals accessing these opportunities it's also about what's next these opportunities will bring tremendous experiences to um or tremendous experience to all of our residents that are going to be that are going to be involved and what we don't want to do is have this as a missed opportunity so for us it's really key that for those individuals that um that do undertake the training that do experience the the excitement of volunteering or or some of the roles that are attached that we're also working with those individuals to say actually what's next how can we use the games experience um, be it through the actual roles or be it through the, um, the training to really help those individuals to to go on and to do um, greater things in the future so we've made some commitments as part of the jobs and skills academy um, around how we want to support individuals um, to take part or access these opportunities so um, the commitments have been around supporting a thousand people in priority groups to access games volunteering opportunities so that's focus on young people and those individuals that are unemployed to support six thousand local residents with games related training to support access to roles in construction logistics security catering cleaning and waste and i'll, I'll go into more detail around some of those contractor vacancies as i move through the presentation and also how we can provide 1,500 local people with, with high level skills training, including high quality work experience in areas like events, services and broadcasting. Um, I suppose the other thing for me to note, just in terms of the um, Jobs and Skills Academy, it isn't a physical building. It's very much an umbrella brand of different stakeholders that the combined authority currently work with that will enable us to to utilize um, some of their activity to support our residents so um, it's comprised of our local authority partners of colleges of training providers um, all kind of working together to to maximizing the opportunities for our residents um, next slide please So first element I wanted to talk about was um, volunteering. So feeding back in through uh, Laura's presentation about how we can support residents to, to be accessing some of these opportunities. Next slide, please. 
so what we're, what we're doing in conjunction with the organising committee is that there is going to be a marketing campaign that's attached to each of the elements of the Jobs and Skills Academy. So focused around be it the volunteering opportunities, the job opportunities, um, or other er elements in terms of how people can, can be involved and with the kind of slogan in terms of get ready to play your part. So there's a, um, I suppose you call it a teaser marketing campaign that's going out imminently, followed by more detailed campaign around the, the different ways in which people can, can be involved. Um, in what we've done is we want to make it, because we literally, in terms of this, we very much in terms of those individuals that want to engage with this, we want them to be um, the faces of those individuals that are participating in the games opportunities to be the faces of our residents. So for us, it's really keen in terms of our marketing that we've replicated that. So in terms of the, the more detailed marketing strategy, it's around having um, you know the faces of residents um, included on that marketing and each of those individuals that are included, they've got their story to tell in terms of how they've upskilled or uh, gained opportunities and uh, the differences made to their lives as well, which I think is, is hugely important. Um, next slide, please. So there are really two key elements in terms of how we're looking to promote and amplify the messaging around volunteering. So firstly, um, as I mentioned before, we're working with colleges, universities, youth hubs to get the messages out to young people around the Commonwealth Games opportunities. And I think there's a real onus on us because, as Laura mentioned, just in terms of the, the opportunities being advertised and when they the volunteering goes live, that's, that's quite a period of time in between. And what we don't want to do is um, for it to be a missed opportunity that, that maybe some of the individuals that we want to engage with won't realise that the game is on our doorstep until till later on. So for us, it's key that we get this messaging out to, to support individuals to be able to um, raise awareness and access the, the game's opportunities. Um, so um, we're working with the universities and colleges in terms of doing, um, I guess, pop-up shops, access to um, facilities um, to really support um, young people to be able to access the opportunities um, as part of the application process around volunteering. And secondly, around how we support unemployed residents through Job Centre Plus, through adult community learning with our local authority colleagues, um, to ensure that we're, we're giving individuals the best chances to be able to engage. And when we share the slides, as I say, they'll see links in relation to um, what that activity looks like um, as reflected on that slide. So next slide, please. The, the other element um, that I'd like to raise in terms of, I guess, volunteering and how we're looking to support as part of the Jobs and Skills Academy is um, really how we're looking to work with, um, with young people who may not think about volunteering in the first instance. So we've recently been awarded funding through the National Lottery to deliver a, a standout project um, aimed at those individuals who are 18 to 30 which will be delivered by um, 10 community organisations uh, that we recently procured. A contract that we delivered between May 21 to December 22. For us, it's, as we've kind of said in, in terms of the previous speakers, it's not just about the games opportunities, it's about what's next. So it's about how we can support young people, not only through the volunteering process, to be able to access some of the employment opportunities, but also in terms of, um, if those individuals are unsuccessful at any stages or if they decide at some point it's not for them, how we can we, can we how we can build on the experiences that they've they've had to help direct them and support them into other opportunities, be it that employment opportunities or be that volunteering back within their own communities. It's really important. Um, so that's officially going to be launched the 26th of May, and obviously more information around those organizations will be on our website at that point as as well so I think that's a really important lever for us in terms of being able to um, work with those individuals that that need that level of wraparound support um, to be able to engage with this process but equally it's those individuals that an experience around the Commonwealth Games will be a life-changing experience for them as well so so hugely important um, next slide please so uh, next thing i'd just like to talk about is just the the access to the commonwealth games employment opportunities so this references the six thousand that i mentioned on a previous slide so um what we are we are looking to do and this is distinct from the uh, the gi group 
opportunities that Sam talked about earlier. Um, as Suki referenced, there are going to be an awful lot of opportunities that are created by the contractors. Um, so some of the, the key numbers of individuals or key roles that are going to be generated will be through security, catering, cleaning, logistics and stewarding. And what we want to do is that um, we want to ensure that um, we have enough local residents that are upskilled and have those licenses to be able to actively apply for those opportunities when they present themselves. So, um, and this kind of feeds into the, the query that we had from Go Trainer earlier on. As part of the um, West Midlands Combined Authority um, devolution deal, we, um, we had uh, adult education budgets that we have been commissioning over the last course of the last couple of years. And for us, um, there are courses that currently we are already delivering, but what we need now to do is given the numbers of opportunities that are created by the Commonwealth Games is to amplify those. So for those organisations that are already um, delivering these qualifications, there's, there's an opportunity in terms of how we can um, amplify should we need that in relation to the Games recruitment. But for us, it's really key that we are working with the, we're almost uniquely working with the contractors in relation to the employment opportunities we're understanding their recruitment needs and how they need us to prepare those individuals for those um, for those opportunities as well. So that potentially involved us utilising our adult education budget to increase the skills of our, our residents and equally for us to promote those um, upskilling opportunities to encourage people to, to work within um, these sectors that have been identified. But as well as that, it's we also have an understanding that our current um, stakeholders, organisations are already working with individuals who might be currently unemployed, might already have those skills. And it's about us making sure that we're promoting those opportunities or extending the reach of the Commonwealth Games vacancies to our um, partner organisations, such as our colleges, uh, Job Centre Plus, local authorities, training providers, community organisations, those, organis um, those organisations that are delivering mainstream government contracts, just to make sure that, um, as I say, we're getting this message out as widely as, as possible and upskilling where there is a requirement to do so. The other element I probably should note in relation to that, that for us, we want to, in terms of the upskilling, whilst um, we'd like to say it's bespoke to the Commonwealth Games opportunities, the important thing for us is that whatever upskilling is undertaken, that it enables those residents to 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 move on and utilize those skills moving forward as well so we want to make sure that whatever support we're offering is um is going to be relevant in terms of the uh, the labor market needs post games as well next slide please so this slide kind of just gives a um an indication of the kind of training interventions that we're looking to put on as part of the jobs and skills academy so, for instance, if we're looking at stewarding, we're looking at spectator safety supervision, complex resolution, dealing with incidents, um, and equally the same in terms of um, cleaning, security, logistics and catering. As the contractors are onboarded by the organising committee, there'll be the opportunity for us to develop that kind of skills um, skills plan for each of those uh, localities and then for us to be able to start upskilling our residents. We will start upskilling now because we know that there's a lot of work to be done, but equally we will, as the gets closer to the games, deliver more um, activity that's um, against the requirements of the employer. And below the slide is kind of an in indication of uh, the timing of some of that training. So as I mentioned, a lot of this training is already um, funded and already delivered through our adult education budget providers that can be found on our West Midlands Combined Authority website. Um, where we kind of noted the dates below is kind of when we expect to see that amplification of that of that um, of that delivery to make sure we can get the numbers that the games require to deliver a, a really fantastic games. Also those dates are very much dependent on, on the contractors um, being awarded by the organising committee as well and um, obviously their requirements of the Jobs and Skills Academy, but we're very clean to be working closely with them. Um, next slide, please. So the third element I mentioned was around um, 1,500 individuals being um, having the opportunity to increase their, their skills. Um, next slide, thank you. So um, what we've done as a the Jobs and Skills Academy through, once again, our adult education budget 
we commissioned a Commonwealth Games uh, kind of funding opportunity to support 1,500, which was awarded to four lead organisations. And it was really important for us. Um, the, the training that I mentioned previously is very much in terms of short term. So it's opportunities for individuals to have kind of short courses to be able to engage with the opportunities. But sometimes some of the more technical roles that are required as part of the GI group recruitment or in terms of um, positions that will be created um, by the games um, or indirectly through the games is basically designing courses to help get businesses get the right technical um, skills in terms of first line management skills, um, delivering better services and coping with increased demand as well. And it's also supporting residents in preparation for, for higher level opportunities. So whilst there's a link on this slide um, for that uh, for those organisations, if we go on to the next slide, please. Um, this gives the information in a little bit more detail. So those organisations that we are working with are MITRE Training, Babington Pathways Group and Bright Direction. And illustrated on this are some of the courses that are being delivered. And I would say that, um, you know, these organisations are very keen to have, um, you know, individuals approach them to contact them to be able to access some of this training that's already available and already being delivered. And as I noted, but on the website, there's a there's um, details of um, how you can get involved and how you can access um, some of these opportunities as well. So um, I think in terms of the Jobs and Skills Academy, as I say, it's really important for us just to to be supporting west midlands residents to be able to access these opportunities both in terms of high level skills both in terms of the, the contract vacancies but equally the the um also the volunteering opportunities as well um and i think next slide i think that's my presentation completed for today thank you john we're now going to go over to Rachel from the National Career yeah. Service. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks, Helen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and uh, really glad that uh, we've got a number of uh, quite a high number of people joining us today. So it's great to be part of this, uh, this, this the whole event basically that's happening. So I represent the National Career Service, um, and we're obviously supporting the Birmingham 2022 Commonwealth Games. Um, whatever the stage of your career, we're here to help, basically, and so I'm going to talk to you about uh, what that looks like. If you can go on to the next slide, please. So how can we actually help you? Well, the National Career Service is a fully government-funded information, advice and guidance service that supports individuals into employment. We offer you free, impartial and, and personalised advice and guidance to help you make career decisions and it is available to anyone over the age of 19. We help you to make decisions about your future and it's important to know what's out there and what's right for you. We will be helping you look and consider the, the opportunities that have been generated by the Commonwealth Games, whether those are volunteer or paid opportunities, and to help you in your applications in, uh, in securing those opportunities. But there are a lot, so it's good to understand what they actually look like, what's involved with them and when what actually suits you. Whatever stage you're at in your career, we can help you understand what your skills are and what skills you need to adapt to new jobs, circumstances and opportunities. In the current pandemic situation, a huge number of, of individuals have contacted the National Career Service and we've helped them upskill and transfer into different um, industry sectors because the roles and opportunities have not been available in their current sector. And, and so they're finding new life in new jobs in a different environment completely and, uh, and we're helping people to do that. There are many options open to you when you're thinking about your next steps. And the National Career Service provides information, advice and guidance to help you make the best decisions on learning, training and work, as well as providing you with ongoing support. We are there with you on a 12 month journey. So we're going to be supporting you through your applications for the Commonwealth Games, but also thereafter as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so what support can we actually provide? 
well, very much careers advice, um, you know, and, and career change information. So helping you understand what your options are that are available to you, uh, the the the, uh, the market, the local market to you, um, information and, and intelligence about the market around you and your your area and what sort of opportunities are available. So understanding how to navigate around that, find out information and uh, and and what applies to you that to, to help you make your decisions. We help you with your effective job searching. We've already been advised today that there are links to the different types of roles available with the Commonwealth Games and the National Career Service can help you navigate these to find the best role or roles for you. With regard to the Commonwealth Games, it's opportunities for you. There are thousands and thousands of opportunities. So, you know, it's not just one, it could be multiple opportunities. Um, and that can be quite confusing at times. It might be a little bit disconcerting to understand what, what suits you best. But the National Career Service can actually simplify all that for you and help, uh, you know, walk you through the process uh, to make sure that uh, that you get your the opportunities, you find out what they are and, uh, and apply for them and, and hopefully secure those opportunities. So we can help you in identifying your transferable and job specific skills, which will help you to apply for the roles with the Commonwealth Games. Again, People have different traits, different attributes, and it's understanding what those are. Sometimes you don't realise just how great you are, and, and the National Career Service can help draw that out and, and help you understand just um, how fab you are and, and, and how good you would be in certain roles and, and to support you with those. We can help you creating a professional tailored CV and or a covering letter. Earlier, Sam from GI Group mentioned the importance of tailoring your CV and potentially cover letter if required for, for individual roles that you apply for. Um, again, this is absolutely critical. You, know, you, you get one chance to make a first impression and the National Career Service can give you um, support in, in tailoring your CV and, and uh, looking at the roles that you want to apply for and helping you um, um, capitalize on that so that you actually tailor the CV for each specific role. We can help when it's uh, when it comes to using social media. So you'll need to know how to search for suitable um, Commonwealth Games opportunities. You've seen the different links that are available, um, but sometimes people are not um, not savvy with IT, and you might want some some support in actually uh, utilising those links and finding out um, how to get to uh, the, the roles that suit you. We also um, can help you using social media for recruitment purposes. Again, there's a lot of links to apply for opportunities. It's not just finding out about them, but it's actually conducting and completing application forms. So when it comes to completing those forms, it could be for volunteering or, or and paid roles with the Commonwealth Games. There might be some personal statements. We've heard that um, sometimes there's free text areas on application forms where you can actually talk about what your skills are or why you feel you're suitable. You might need some help in actually phrasing that, actually highlighting, you know, your your selling points, what's great about you, why you think you're suitable for that particular role. So we can help you with that. When it comes to interviews, we can help with interview preparation and even mock interviews. Again, we've uh, we've had it mentioned earlier um, in the um, this webinar that there will be competency based interviews. So the, the skills and the competencies will be in the job advert and the job description. We can help you to prepare and do more mock interviews with you to help guide you through this process. So it can be, again, a little bit daunting prospect if you've not had an interview for a little while. Um, so we can help you understand what's going to be involved, what the key competencies are by looking at the job description with you that you're interested in, and then giving you some hints and tips on, on how to perform in the interview. And as Asma mentions, perhaps some mock interview practice as well. So we're more than happy to help with that. When it comes to learning new skills, that could be through formal and informal training. We engage with a number of different training providers. Some of the, uh, the providers that, uh, that John's just mentioned, we collaborate with them and uh, we can help you with accredited formal training, but also informal training as well through those providers. When it comes to volunteering opportunities at the Commonwealth Games, again, we can highlight what those are, how to find out about them and support in your applications for those. We can also help you with information on other organisations that can help you with specific queries. We had a query earlier from a, tra um, from a training provider called GoTrain. Now, we work with GoTrain as well as many other training providers and support individuals and, and you know, we help them to upskill which then in turn gives them a greater chance of securing a role with the Commonwealth Games. You know, when it comes to um, volunteering um, and understanding and, and you know, that information, different bodies can provide information on that. 
we've heard about the um, the volunteer the selection team is going to be inviting 25,000 people to attend a one hour selection event you know there's that there's there's going to be 13,000 voluntary opportunities that they're needing to fill so it, there's a lot of individuals going to be applying for roles it's really important to maximize on your personal situation and your skills and experience so we can help you with that and and you know give you the best chance the best opportunity to uh, to achieve the you know in the opportunities with the commonwealth games that you want you've heard today how the commonwealth games will be a life changing experience and i couldn't agree more with that the national career service can support individuals not only in their applications for commonwealth games opportunities but also help them post games to utilize the skills, the training and the experience that you've gained to secure other roles in the future to help develop your careers that will be you know, happening beyond the Commonwealth Games as well. OK, so if we can move on to the next slide, please. So how do you go about getting this help? Um, well, you need to get in touch with us, basically. If you want to get this free support, and I can't emphasize enough, it is free, fully funded government support. So if you'd like the free support to help with your applications, then please do get in touch. Our qualified careers advisors will discuss your strengths, your skills and ambitions. They'll very much help you to consider your options and the opportunities open to you, both in the Commonwealth Games and beyond. They will suggest different steps that you can take uh, to help um, you know, improve your chances of securing the, the opportunities, the right opportunity for you to help you achieve those goals. They can give you information about your local labour market and very much help you to identify opportunities to support your career goals, both in the sort of immediate future, in the sort of next 12 months or so with the Commonwealth, goal, uh, Commonwealth Games, but also um, your long term career goals. Very keen to help you uh, achieve those as well. So you can call our helpline and speak to an advisor on 0800 100 900. Our lines are open from 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. on Saturdays and 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. on bank holidays. Calls are free from landlines and most mobile numbers as well. So please, that number again is 0800 100 900. Get in touch and we will be delighted to help you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Rachel. Um, great. So we've got a few more, a bit of an opportunity for questions again. Um, I can see we've had lots, um, so I'll just pick out a few and then just make sure that we get back to you all with the rest of the answers to the questions you've put forward. We, um, before this session, had quite a few about how we're engaging young people, and um, which hopefully John and, and Laura have gone some way to responding to. So thank you both for that. Um, we have a question um, that I thought was useful to pick up on, which was, how can those who don't have access to IT apply and, and how are people being supported in that respect? John, do you want to pick up for Laura? I can then um, take this one um, or part of it anyway, and if anybody's got anything else to add, they can. Um, so we are working with um, community libraries throughout the region um, and gathering the information on opening hours and how to book laptop or computer space within the community libraries um, so that individuals can can do that. So fully appreciate because we are online. Um, I think we'll probably all experience the woes of Wi-Fi, depending on where you live. Um, and not only that, um, even just being able to have that access to an, a, a laptop or computer. The application form can be done on a, sm a phone, but again, you're relying on it being a smartphone um, that somebody would have to, to use. So the, yeah, communica uh, the community libraries are the main um, focus, and that will um, be how we look to advise or guide people. Um, we would also be working with existing groups and organisations, um, adult education centres, for example, who um, and local authority initiatives who already um, are doing great work in this space um, and who are on site um, to, to help and support us um, with publicising that people can go in for drop-in days or um, they'll be um, publicising through their networks and those that they engage with um, that they'll be able to support with the application. Thank Can you. I add something in there as well, Helen, please? Sure, um, please. 
on top of that, Laura, as well, um, the National Career Service engages with a number of training providers, um, and and I'm not saying not saying all of them, but several of those training providers loan out laptops when when individuals are conducting training sessions. Um, but who don't have the uh, the, um, uh, the the IT equipment themselves. So it may well be in the support in upskilling for particular roles, people may have access to loaning laptops, um, and then they've got that capacity then to uh, the equipment to actually um, also be applying for for roles because the the organisations that we work with will be very keen to support individuals uh, in their applications. So thank you, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, John. Was there anything that you'd like to add? Yeah, I think the only thing I'd just say is, is just to reiterate that obviously in terms of the, the opportunities residents to be supported in terms of accessing this, I guess it's wider than, than just us here today on the call. We are working with a whole range of stakeholders that work with individuals who might be, that find themselves maybe unable to access the internet from home that I'm sure will be able to support. I think there's an onus on us to make sure that we give or build capacity in those organisations to be able to support the people they're currently working with with these opportunities as well. Thank you, John. And Laura, we've got a question here about um, which venues volunteering opportunities will be at. Could you just tell us a bit about how that will work? Yes, so volunteering opportunities are at every um, sport venue, um, so around the region, and you can see that um, uh, on our, our website. But that will be at the NEC, it will be the Coventry Stadium, Leamington Spa, um, Canic Chase, um, Warwick for the road race within Birmingham, um, but we also have um, uh, what we call arrival and departure hubs. So it's not just the sport competition venues, which I'm sure everyone thinks is the most exciting in the place to be. And um, what we try and manage expectations is that any volunteer role, you're not guaranteed to see any of the sport at all, and you're usually very busy um, with uh, the responsibility that you have. So. Um, some of the, the other um, locations, such as um, airports or train stations, um, transport hubs, um, are, can be just as exciting um, with watching people come in and out. Um, we have what we call a uniform and accreditation centre. So, again, not necessarily a competition based, but that's where it starts slightly earlier than the, the competition itself. So, that will be running from around June. Um, and we would have all of anybody that's requiring accreditation or um, a uniform to be going through that venue. Um, we also have um, an international um, broadcast um, hub, so media um, centre, um, which isn't necessarily competition based. We, um, and we also will have volunteers who will be based in live sites. So that, that's not next to competition venues, but within certain locations um, throughout um, towns such as Solihull, Hill, um, Sandwell, Coventry, Birmingham itself, where they will have those cultural life sites that volunteers will, will add value to. So there's um, when people apply, they can indicate where their preference would be. So for some, it might be their preference would be to stay local, um, so to stay um, kind of close to, to where they live. Um, instead of travelling away across the region, but for some um, you might live in one part of the region and the sport or the activity that you are very much passionate about is in the other side, so you can then indicate your preference for being an area. Um, but yeah, lots of different locations, the sport competition but ones, um, athlete villages, um, Arrival to departure hubs, uniform accreditation, and the media centres are the main one. I, something I didn't mention in my um, presentation, but we also have a, a venue in London at the Velodrome, which will be having the track cycling. Um, so that's just one that I'd missed off that I hadn't mentioned there. Hope that Great. Helps. Thank you, Laura. There's probably another question for you, and apologies if this put you on the spot a little bit, but it is quite yeah. topical. Will you need to be vaccinated to be a volunteer? Very good question, and um, I suppose I give a, a bit of a politician's answer here in terms of we won't follow the guidelines that are given from the government at the time. Um, it's very hard um, to predict what's going to be happening over even you know when our volunteer selection centre, with all the will in the world, we would look to be doing that face to face, but very mindful that we are always got plan Bs and Cs in the background if we have to change and adapt. Um, 
so the answer um if, if that is a requirement from and that comes from government guidelines um then that is something that we would um potentially look to implement but it's not something that we are stipulating right now i think there's just there's too much unknown um but we will be supporting an understanding of um people in terms of we're coming out quite a a, well, a very difficult time and um, there's still a lot of uncertainty and nervousness um, so everything that we do will we'll be making sure that it's for the um, safety and the well-being and looking after the welfare of our, our volunteers so it's something that we will have to continuously update on and through our website and our communications that we put out we will make sure that we update people so they know what the um, requirements are. Thank you. Um, conscious that we're at the end of time, I've just got one final question, which is probably a bit more cheerful. Um, and again, probably for you, Laura, which is do volunteers get to keep their uniforms after the games? Yes, they definitely do get to keep their uniform. And um, it's one of the most wonderful things um, when I was involved at the Glasgow Games where we um you'd be walking down the street maybe months or years later and you still see people wearing their uniform with pride. So yes, they will get to keep it. Great. Well, thank you. Is there anything else that the panel members would like to mention before we go? No? Great. Um, conscious, we've still got some questions that we haven't answered. So like we said, um, we'll make sure that we send all the information round. We will share the slides and the recording. Um, thank you everyone for listening to us today you'll be able to find out more information on the west midlands combined authority website on the your career web page and um, we will also circulate all the information to people that have registered for this webinar today so um, thank you very much and um, we hope you found the session useful